It's my great pleasure to welcome my friend and sister in truth, Reverend Sonia Davidson, to give us the message. Reverend Sonia. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Let me add my own words of welcome to our Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And of course, we include those who are tuning in on the World Wide Web. This morning is a little different for me in many ways, but in one particular way, you'll notice that I'm going electronic this morning. So you'll give me a few moments. While I, I tune in. <laughs> right. This morning is entitled God and Company Unlimited. I dare to presume without fear of contradiction that there is not one person in the sound of my voice who would not desire to experience more of life and from life. The more may take any form or many forms for no two persons are alike in what they desire. This is not to say that people never arrive at a feeling of contentment. Contentment, yes. Stagnation, no. Contentment is that point where wherever you are in life, you are appreciating it fully. You are so grateful to be there where you are and you recognize that you are taking life in its stride and there is more to come, even if you have not at that time defined what that more will look like. Stagnation is a mistake of the internet where we think we have arrived. We have everything we need, and so I'm happy because I have my this, I have my that, and all of this is looking at the outer and not the inner. Fortunately, the life, the unmanifest life, which flows through us, will not allow that status to remain in that state of what I call stagnation. The unlimited is constantly flowing upon itself. The unmanifest is constantly flowing upon itself to create form out of itself in an inescapable pattern of reality. And we are a part of it. We cannot help but be a part of it. We are it being manifest. We cannot be separated from it. And therefore, we partake of its nature and are constantly being impelled to conform to its nature. Having said this, yes, we have choice. And we all exercise that choice, consciously or unconsciously. This is our gift from the divine. I'm reminded of this by 2 Corinthians 3, verse 11. The Lord is spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty is freedom. Arguably, the freedom which, most sought, which is most sought after is the freedom from fear. Fear is a necessity, though. It is necessary for safe existence on the earth plane. Everyone has felt fear at some time in their lives. It is when the fear prevents us from enjoying the life we have and from reaching for what we want from life, that we need to rethink, to repent. 
The fear of failure is what separates mankind from the things we desire or the things we are called upon to do. It is that fear which keeps our talents and abilities hidden from ourselves and from the world. It can keep us changed to situations which no longer serve us and which limits us. It would, it would, could mute our exist insistence, the insistence that is coming from the inner voice and could therefore slow the progress of our spiritual growth, the inevitable progress of our spiritual growth. And I'm reminded of a, probably one of the, maybe the only poem that I can remember, a verse from, from my childhood days in what used to be called elementary school. And it goes like this. It's just one verse from a poem by Elegy in a Country Churchyard. It's a poem written in the 18th century by Thomas Gray. And the verse that stands out for me is full many a gem of purest ray serene, the dark unfathomed caves of ocean bear. Full many a floor is made to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air. And to interpret, there are many precious gems that may never be found because they remain at rest in the ocean. I must say though that when I read this as a child. There was something in me that didn't like how I was interpreting it. Because I was interpreting it as if there was something fatalistic about life. That, you know, you're born and some people are selected to do things and other persons are just meant to just be locked into a predetermined fate of anonymity. But later on, much later on, I woke up and I saw it differently. And my interpretation of it is better understood by inserting a word. And I'll read it again and see if it makes different sense to you. Full many a floor is made only to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air, only to, and not to only, meaning from our choices we may decide that we would rather have a quiet life. But even if the life is quiet, that life must have some significance, some meaning to somebody. Nobody should pass through this life, can pass through this life without making some impression somewhere. Despite enormous potential, great talent, and persistent longing, there are those, yes, who can live and die, and their secret potential, talent, is securely locked inside of them unknown to even them. But more important, there are those who are aware that there is something in them which needs to be expressed in a more concrete and visible way and yet take no action. Jack Addington states this, man's fear is simply a lack of trust in God within. Infinite intelligence knows how to meet the situations of life as they arise. Fear, such as that which separates us from a feeling of trust in God, is a mistake of which the remedy is not to try to fight the fear, but to draw closer to God. Draw closer to God, thank you. Mm. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is John 4, 
verse 24. If you don't like the picture that's making you fearful, paint it over. Paint it over with something that makes you feel better. And Revelation 21 verse 5 says, Behold, I make all things new. The I is the I am with whom we must look to, to whom we must look if we would come into our own. To have a new experience, we must arrive at a new awareness that corresponds exactly to the change we desire. To do so, we must give up the old way of thinking. If the old way of thinking is not what we want, we must give it up. But we will not give it up until we have replaced it with where we want to go, the thoughts of where we want to go. The spiritual meaning of forgiveness means giving up thinking one way or being for a better way of thinking and being. Give up for a better way. We are meant to express ourselves according to our true identity, which is the divine nature. A glimpse of what this would be like is implied in the words of our founder, Ernest Holmes, who spoke these words in the final sermon by the sea, shortly before he made his transition. Find me one person who no longer has any fear of the universe, or of God, or man, or anything else. And you will have brought me someone in whose presence we may sit and fear shall vanish as clouds before the sunlight. So established will that person be in a state of fearlessness that the very energy, the aura, and the consciousness is so infectious that being in that person's presence is an instant awareness of the presence of God radiating from them as peace. The fear that robs people of their peace of mind is based on preoccupation, perhaps with the memory of past failures or past lapses of judgment. We just want to, we just don't want to risk repeating the past mistakes. So we talk ourselves out of obedience to the divine urge to be more. Shame or embarrassment and anxiety are powerful deterrents to progress and achievement. But very more, than, um, more often than not, the shame is of our own making. And so is the embarrassment because it is our perception of how we have handled the situation. Almost all the while, nobody else knows, and if they know, they don't care. On the one hand, one that is the shame and embarrassment and fear keeps us stuck in the past that is behind us. And on the other hand, it keeps us in a state of anticipation of a future that has not come and is not likely to come. To break free and claim our liberty, we need to remember this. The Lord is spirit. And where the Lord is, there is liberty. And an affirmation which is so helpful to me and has been helpful to me is the truth makes me free from the fear of bondage and emancipates me from the thought of limitation. And I think it's a good time for me to read it in two parts and have you repeat it with me. The Lord makes me free from the fear of bondage. The Lord makes me free from the fear of bondage and emancipates me from the thought of limitation of limitation and emancipates me from the thought of limitation. No, I had to dig deep recently 
and use everything that is within me to rid myself of doubts which were coming out of left field. I have mostly gone through life just going from one experience to the other. Without giving it much thought, as the experience and opportunities come up, I go into them. So I had not had any experience where I had to think, wow, what am I doing? How am I going to do this? Well, except for driving, I think, and swimming, but otherwise, other things that have come, work-wise or anything else, um, had not come with this. But yes, maybe in a little way, when I left my practice to go to flirt with academia for a while, I, I had some fleeting moments of, hmm, yeah, what's going to happen to my practice? And then I brushed it off. But this time, some real good old time fear came to me. When I, yes, as usual, jumped into the idea of a new experience and I set up a um, few months shy of my 70th birthday, I set up this idea of a partnership and to go into business. I could not resist the place that I saw because it was exactly like what I had in my mind but didn't even know existed concretely. In fact, it didn't exist when I had it in my mind. It was a perfect place for a wellness consciousness when you come into a, a medical practice. And I think that was what spurred me on, along with the fact that my daughter was more than willing to come into business with me. What may have put some of the fears that I have never been into business without my husband being a part of it, but this time he would have nothing to do with it. He said, I am going on, I am moving on, right? And I said, I'm moving on too, but I'm moving on without you this time. Well, I mean moving on without you in business. So <laughs> I got this place and I was so happy and everything was wonderful and I was so immersed in it. Until when the first month came and all the bills were about to come. And then you hear cold sweat. <laughs> you understand what I mean, right? And yes, it was time to fess up and act up. And so one of these opportunities, one of these affirmations came. The truth makes me free from the fear of bondage and emancipates me from the thought of um, limitation. I had, there are two issues here. One, I had to think, wow, this is not going to tie me into concrete and steel, right? It is not going to tie me anything. Nothing can tie me in. And I also had to recognize that there is no lack in God. I had to know it. This was the, the I should not be intimidated by the fact that my bills would be many times more than anything I had had before because God always steps up to the plate, right? So, you know, it's interesting, you know, whenever you, you talk about fear, I decided I wanted to talk about fear quite some weeks ago, and guess what happened? That's how it is. Whenever you need to learn something yourself, ho -ho, it comes to you first. So I can tell you that it's still a work in progress, but all fear has disappeared, right? All fear has disappeared. And in fact, there is just anticipation of what next. But I had to work at it. Liberty, liberty, freedom, lies in the law of God and how we use it to liberate ourselves from the nooses of conformity, yes, conformity said to me, hey, most of your patients who are 60 are retired. All of your contemporaries who are doctors are retired. What are you doing there, right? Yeah. From it also, liberty frees us from any form of domination that would separate us from our dreams. We must seek an alliance with the indwelling God by conscious choice. 
conscious choice. Remember all along, I was just moving along from one thing to the other and unconsciously demonstrating what I needed to. But this time, I had to do it by conscious choice. And so, we, get a, we become to a point where we must develop a conviction that we can free ourselves and that the unfailing, infallible responsiveness of the nature of God is our nature. It is the law that is within us and is available to us. It is the definite, predictable, consistent, unfailing nature of God. It is the law of God. It is through our relationship with the law that we create the experiences we intend. We must be convinced of this to realize its benefits. So this is a work of perpetual awareness and turning within. Dr. Ernest Holmes, and I love this, and I, I held on to this, in his book, Living the Science of Mind, says a man without conviction, conviction cannot hope to make the same use of the creative power of his thought as the one who has it. He continues, we must deliberately play with the idea that the kingdom of heaven is within. It is with this conviction that we sign the binding contract of our partnership with God. And listen, he says, we are in partnership with the infinite mind and the name of the partnership is God and company. God and company. And I added, God and Company Unlimited, because I had just formed a limited liability company. And I'm going to, in my mind, change it to unlimited. So we are in contract, all of us. A contract that cannot be dissolved. Fear has no role in God and Company. God standing for supreme intelligence, the universal creative order, the dynamic law, the all presence, God the senior partner, anything you want to call God. Love is a currency, and perfect love casts out fear. Dr. Holmes again tells us, if our concept of love and our belief in its beneficial presence is greater than our own fear of its opposite, we shall win. So we have to believe in the goodness of this presence. Know that the presence lies ready to give us according to what we have co become convinced that it is. Know that it is not low there or low here. It is within, nearer than our hands and feet. We do not have to call it out to come to us from anywhere. We are surrounded by an infinite intelligence, he says, and immersed in its limitless wisdom. We can draw on it, unquote, we can draw on it for guidance. That is what one arm of the partnership brings to the contract of God and company, unlimited, he says. The other arm is our complete trust and conviction in the senior partner God within and around and the clarity of the choices we ourselves make, unquote. We choose, the law of God delivers. The choosing is not negotiable. It is our side of the partnership. It is not enough to know that the divine guidance can guide, says Dr. Holmes. We must know that the divine intelligence is guiding us, and there are no mistakes in the divine plan. The law of mind working for us is inhibited or accelerated in its action through faith or acceptance. We must affirm that there is divine guidance. We must consciously know that we are daily guided and directed into right action, unquote. And for me, these words, I intend to continue to affirm, God, the infinite source of my being is a source and form of my life. Because no matter what you affirm in terms of things, everything begins with your relationship with God. God, the infinite source of my being, 
is the source and form of my life. We and the senior partner constitute an indivisible whole. We are one. The company has no borders. Wherever we turn our attention, God and company establishes a branch or a franchise, which must be successful. In any branch, there is an entire stock of divine goods, Dr. Ohm says. All the attributes of God are manifest in that stock. All the good we could ever desire. The company and its branches has no competition because there's no competition in God. No one has monopoly, so there's enough for everybody. Business is good because God is goodness. We must claim this regularly. Business is good because God is goodness. We are the members of God in company. Board meetings must be regular. Board meetings take place in the silence. Yes, we can be the talkers in the board meeting, but in the silence, we will hear what we need to hear. We spend so much time telling God what we want. Sometimes we don't stop to listen what God has to say. So Ernest Holmes, and this is one of the few books that I have made, maybe the only book where he emphasizes the importance of silence. And he says that silence doesn't mean that you're going to blank out your mind or become you know, unconscious. Quite the contrary. He says you are still but what you do, you make the intention, you state the intention to turn away from the outer and be completely at home in your own mind, in your in says, the inner workings of your mind. It doesn't matter what the inner workings is, so don't be afraid of the thoughts that come to you while you're there. It is working within you to achieve a state eventually of such quiet that you can discern and distinguish the voice of the divine, the senior partner. So it is just a wonderful thing to know that this partnership, we are there, we can go to board meeting anytime. We don't have to have it once a month like the Temple of Light. We can have board meeting whenever we feel like, right? God is always present 24 seven, right? Ah, yes, no. The purpose of life has to be defined by each one of us. But the underlying purpose is to express God. And in expressing God, there is joy. Self-expression brings all the attributes of God into manifestation. Though we can choose at any time to specialize any of these attributes, wisdom, joy, Peace, love, beauty, wholeness, and power, which I call authority. Choice opens the many doors of self-expression. And I was so impressed by this, the words of this young Brazilian footballer, or when he was young, Rola, Rolandino, Rola, Rolandino, Roland what? Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Anyway, I was impressed by him so much that I didn't get his work name. R-O-L-A-N-D-I-N-O, Rolandino. Rolandino. Okay. Somebody interviewed him and sort of implied, boy, you know, things must be tough for you to, you know, in becoming a footballer. And you know what he said? And it's so etched in my mind, I remember every word. Everything in my life has a good face and a bad face, but I choose the good face. I am always happy and I enjoy playing football. Argument done, that's it. And Eleanor Roosevelt, wife of the president of, one of the presidents of the United States, Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, gives us some advice. She says, you gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look it in the face. You are able to say to yourself, I have lived it through. I can take the next thing that comes along. Bring it on. I know bring it on is my word, my Jamaican word. You must do, she says, you must do the thing you think you cannot do. You must do the thing you think you cannot do. When anything at all, you know, it's not, I'm not just talking about business. You might want to come up here and sing one morning. You might want to do 
give a talk somewhere, start a radio program, a TV program, anything that you choose to do. You might want to go work in the inner city. I can't tell you what is in the secret place of your mind, but I can tell you that something is there. You have to allow it. And the more you go into the silence is the more you will hear that still small voice, which will tell you what is the next step to take. And if you are in the process of tackling something which is a challenge to you, the still small voice will tell you what to do, when to do, and how to do. So I say to you, affirm, like I have been impelled to do, God, the infinite source of my being, is the source and form of my life. Say it, God, the infinite source of my being, is the source and form of my life. One more time. God, the infinite source of my being, is the source and form of my life. Namaste. Thank you.